I'd like for Mr. Ludos now to speak a little bit about the plans for deployment on the fire side of our public safety budget given the safer grant. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Um, one correction relative to the statement uh, relative to uh, the police department, uh, 55 is the number, not 51. So that's what we're operating with today. The SAFER grant, as has been stated, is a two-year grant. In meeting with the command staff from the fire department last week, uh, we had a rather in-depth meeting. And as uh, uh, Tim indicated, we have had already a high level of looking forward. Uh, as the manager just indicated, this two years is, opens a window for us. It isn't a solution to everything, but it certainly is the one opportunity that gives us to look to the future, begin to plan, and be able to implement some things. The 15 firefighters who are saved with that $2.32 million, what we're finding here is it'll give us the opportunity to man it back at the 50 number and to maintain those stations that we currently have provided we do not have to go below minimum staffing. And one of the things we're going to do is modify the number of minimum staffing. We already took a look at the overtime budget. Um, that's a key factor in public safety. That is one of the things that continues to cost this municipality a, a huge amount of money, both on the police and the fire side. By addressing that, we hope to address some of those other issues that are out there that need to be addressed. Um, one of the um, things that Tim talked about, it was the capital side of it, the repair side of it. As you know, the city's been able to repair the roof on this building, and that has been long overdue. In addition to that, you have four fire stations, some of which have the same circuit date of construction as this one does, uh, that are in drastic need of the same kinds of repairs, as well as the roof at the police department. As we look at the needs, if we don't begin to manage this better, I think the SAFER grant also gives us a great opportunity to continue to examine the opportunity for Saginaw County to begin to look at another delivery system other than what we have here. One career department and 10 or 12 volunteer departments. We need to start looking at that regional fire service. Again, the collaborative efforts that the, the governor has talked to us about this gives us an opportunity as the leading fire department in Saginaw County to start to look to the future. Uh, Mr. Kalora said, think outside the box, be innovative and creative. One of the things we have started is in the past two and a half years um, since I came on board, we have had some of the most innovative and creative discussions, I think, with other public safety entities to look at options. We can't continue down that same road. I agree with that 100, but we can't keep doing business the way we're doing. Uh, there's a famous quote that sits at the bottom of the memo. It says, if we continue to do business like we are, we will continue to get the same result. That's just a fact. And so we are looking to change there. Um, these shifts will we'll find that uh, we'll reduce our minimum staffing to control uh, the maximum number of stations open and the amount of overtime that we expend as an organization. We've also implemented um, other things that are going to be looked at as you move to your console agenda tonight. Uh, instead of looking at one vendor, we began to look at ways of cutting costs by municipal bids, uh, multiple bids on a variety of services that people are able to provide versus uh, and reducing transport costs, personnel costs of having to pick up engines and apparatus and drive them to new locations. So it isn't just that the SAFER grant gives us bodies, but with the cooperation of the command staff at the fire department, we have already begun planning and are implementing effective today a lot of changes that I believe will provide us with some of the concerns that Mayor Pro Tem Browning has. Uh, and you're talking about now going back to the four stations. And you mentioned a real concern with Hess Street, with the structure of that building. I, I believe it was when the truck pulls in, the, the, the floor starts to sink. Is it, it I mean, uh, on Hess Street, 
station. Is that correct? Yes, that's yes. And and, and my biggest concern three. is three. My biggest concern is putting a lot of revenue into that building, it, it, you know, or looking at another alternative, you know, uh, that that may be because if the if the cost was thirty thousand dollars to keep it just keep the lights on and keep it open, you, we we're going to have a very big cost on, on repairs there, and, and so I, I I guess there must be some thought on whether we continue to use that, put a lot of money into it, or restructure, re, you know. That is one. That's not a. Re I'm not talking a reduction of manpower. No, I'm no. talking about this building Allocation. here doesn't work anymore. We that is on the on the plate. We are looking at that. Um, one of the things we have that is oftentimes not publicized well enough. Mr. Carwatt and I have already had these discussions relative to that station, looking at where the water is coming from and making some modifications. Uh, but one of the things, the four fire stations are the only four buildings that this city owns that do not fall under the direction of Mr. Carwatt and his staff. Those buildings are maintenanced by firefighters. And so one of the things we've already begun to look at in, along those lines is a modification to station one because of the ceiling height in there, we can't move a piece of equipment. We've gotten bids, those bids, uh, we've just gotten three quotes, and I'll say not bids, but quotes. And looking at a modification that needs to make, elevate that ceiling so we can get another apparatus in there, which we have nowhere else to put. So we are moving forward to look at that and manage those costs. And certainly, if it costs 30,000 to keep it open, we wouldn't want to keep it open and then spend an additional 30. So we are looking to see if there's a method by which we can do that. Um, the other caution that I have is when you begin to permanently close stations, then you're going to have citizens on both sides of the river having issues with that and probably council members doing that. If we have to look at that rotation due to staffing, we're also examining the fact of brownouts so that it would rotate um, and not one station would bear the brunt of it. Those brownouts will still return to us some revenue savings along those lines. So we are very well aware of that station's issues. Um, an assessment is being made of what the estimated costs are. And again, we began discussions with Mr. Carwatt uh, probably six months ago during the winter time, and those are going to continue to look at what the resolution is and assessment of the cost. Mr. Ludo, so your presentation seems to have so, sort of a regional flavor to it. And I know that not this past weekend, but the weekend before last, there was a big fire down here on Potter and Warren. And uh, the, the train depot owned the building that got burned, burned and torn down. And then the Elks, it's the old Elks building that was saved, Correct. even though there was some damage. But the thing I found intriguing was that there was a Buena Vista fire truck at the scene. So there must be some level of cooperation already. I, I, heard, I heard that was a code red fire. Right. What we had happen on that day were two commercial fires simultaneous to each other just about. They, the alarms came in almost uh, within, we were on, on scene on one and got a secondary one to come. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the places you deploy our aerials is on commercial fires or, or multiple structures. Uh, rarely do our aerials are needed for other than that. What happened in that case is we had deployed all of our manpower on that commercial structure and needed assistance to get into that second structure to continually to effectively fight it. In Saginaw County, every fire department, like the law enforcement side of it, there is a mutual agreement to support us. Um, that truck from Buena Vista is the one that was uh, bought with uh, federal dollars. One of the stipulations on that grant, and this council, I'm not sure if everybody was here the night that happened, there was some uh, insinuation that the only reason we were trying to be collaborative is as I wanted their truck because all mine were broke. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that statement erred because that truck, by the terms of the grant, if we ask for it and it's available, has to be sent. So the vehicle you saw there was their, their vehicle. In addition to that, Saginaw Township responded. And did we, do you, were you working that day? Saginaw and Buena Vista. So those, both of those agencies sent us both manpower and equipment. 
And we intend to continue to nurture those relationships because, again, I'm convinced that a standalone fire department in Saginaw County does not make sense to me. Not for any of us, not for the city nor the municipalities that surround us who have huge amounts of money tied up in large sums of equipment um, and we just need to find a better way to be cooperative. But that, you are correct, sir, we did get that from them. And, and just, ju just with that thought, today, during rush hour, on the way home from work, our, we had two trucks respond to the Veterans Administration Hospital, and I know that's in Carleton, but we were out there assisting whatever. I don't know if it was a practice run or what, but um, is that city? That's in the city. It was, that was yeah, that, that, was, that and Dindorfer Woods were annexed in the 50s, I think. Okay. okay. So we were in the right place. We were in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we, we took that from Carlton. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for your information. Uh, you made a comment about past couple years in terms of Saginaw in the position we've been in over the last couple of years, I would, I would concur, we have taken the lead on pressing the issue of the regionalization of the services. And uh, even though uh, uh, it has not been popular, but it's been necessary. And, and I think that's thinking outside the box. And I think it's very important that we continue that vein in terms of uh, pushing the envelope. The cooperation of the command staff of the fire department, I just wanted to personally you know, make reference to that and say thank you because, uh, you know, when you, when you have innovation and creative ideas, you have to have folks around you with the mindset to embrace them, okay, and not be closed-minded, but be open-minded. So uh, to the leadership, I think that uh, it goes well to say uh, we appreciate the openness of leadership there. Uh, I'm very optimistic with our, with our, our new chief, uh, Chief Light. Uh, he has that same philosophy. And I'm very hopeful that uh, as we continue to look at those new and innovative uh, options that we have that, uh, again, the leadership staff will embrace and support that as well. So I just want to publicly say that. And also to the fireside, uh, there was a, uh, there was a uh, very positive uh, accommodation to Deputy Chief, not Deputy Chief, Deputy Fire Marshal Martin, to Fire Marshal Martin, uh, Mr. Raff Martin has, exemplified leadership, positive community orientation in terms of representing the city of Saginaw. And I think having positive leadership in places strategically like that will also uh, assist us in accomplishing our mission in terms of being the best we possibly could be. So I just want the public to say that and thank you for uh, the leadership of the fire department as well. Thank you very much. Okay. And I think along the lines, uh, Councilman Went mentioned the, the people within that organization who initiated that grant, po that grant mm -hmm. process. They're, those folks at that agency stayed on top of it as much as they could. Um, they worked diligently. Uh, we had to make some, we had to switch horses in the middle of the stream on mm -hmm. this grant. Um, it, initially it was to retain 11 positions. We later faced these layoffs <coughs> and all of this was done because of a team effort. And the manager has repeatedly said, and he says this frequently, that he has a team that surrounds him. Right. And, and as the assistant city manager, I can't say enough about the efforts of the people that I have under my division, uh, both from inspections and the police department and the fire department. Um, there's some great people that continue to work diligently to the best interest of this city mm -hmm. and the citizens. And I think that's what sometimes gets lost in some of these reports. We focus sometimes in the media on those things which are minuscule and miss sure. the real obvious factors, and that is that we will continue to deliver services for public safety that are in the best interest of this community with the resources we have available. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Just, <clears throat> just in summary, uh, for the information that has been presented to you tonight, um, July 1 is a benchmark. It's the start of the new fiscal year. It's also the beginning of the implementation of our spending plan. Since the adoption of our spending plan, obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, what-if scenarios and other things. In fact, as late as last Friday, I had a discussion uh, with the police chief and the assistant city manager and the deputy city manager regarding 
um, any alternatives that we could come up with, uh, and we're looking at those. And to the citizen who suggests uh, a more uh, hands-on and donative approach from the community, we're happy to look at that as well. Anything that gives us an advantage because there is no surplus or no escrowed funds available to redirect into additional personnel staff. I mean, there, there just isn't. Our spending plan carries us through to June 30th, 2014 um, in a fiscally responsible and a service deliverable kind of way. And we're going to follow that. We're on that course, uh, despite as the assistant city manager said, the di diversions and the minuscule focus on things. I'm proud to say that we've stayed that course that we presented to you and we're confident that we're going to be able to provide a service to the 51,000 residents in the city of Saginaw, which in my opinion is where the priority lies. Because if we can find better ways of delivering those services and cut the cost, then we would probably be able at that point to free up some additional revenue to enhance our services. But until we do that, it won't be sustainable. And you've heard me say many times, whatever we do here has to be sustainable. But we're willing to look at any alternatives, any options. And for those who have suggested that perhaps if the uh, police unions and the administration can't seem to agree on what makes sense or what contains costs, we would be willing uh, to uh, listen to a third party in the discussions about what makes sense. But it has to has a, have a cost containment provision. Um, unfortunately, in our talks, uh, we didn't get that. And so we're moving on, which is what we have to do. But if at any time we have an opportunity to sit back down and talk about some real cost cutting and sustainable measures, we're willing to do that either directly or through a third party. And I want that to be understood uh, because again, the bottom line is not what's in the best interest of individuals, but it's what's in the best interest of the city of Saginaw. We have a budget in place that gets us there. And so with that, uh, Madam Clerk, that concludes my report.